going to now continue with static and dynamic parameters okay of the spirometry so static parameters okay well you know them from physiology but let's say this is a total lung capacity and this is vital capacity and this is a residual volume so and so these are the main ones. Also, we can display it like this. So if this is going to be like in time, this is a tidal volume. That means if you're not doing anything, you're just breathing like normally without any exercise, then this is your normal tidal volume. Okay. And well, maybe I could try it once more. So, so if you're not... If you're not doing anything you're normally breathing, you breathe like this, and then someone tells you that inhale as, as much as you can, then exhale, okay, and then just breathe again. So so this is sort of like, so if here is the limit, so this would be the vital capacity, okay? So, and of course, below over here this is the residual volume okay and what is important over here right away if you have restricted diseases so basically you know that the all the volumes will decrease okay so the total lung capacity vital capacity and residual volume all of them will be decreased right away Okay, yeah. In contrast, if you have an obstructive disease, in case of residual volume, it could be like normal, or it could even increase. There could be, you know, if there is an air trapping, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So residual volume could be increased. And Typically, total lung capacity could, that's why this could be also increased, okay? So it doesn't have to change so much or it can be increased, okay? So these are the static parameters. And now let's jump to dynamic ones, which are much more important in this case or in these cases. So dynamic parameters. Okay, and let's do the normal case over here. So a normal, healthy person, how this is going to work. So first we're going to talk about FEF1, which is a forced expiratory volume for one second. Okay, and basically you were supposed to do this in physiology, but the idea is I'm going to breathe out everything and then they will ask me to inhale as, as much as I can. So I'm going to inhale as much as I can. I'm going to hold the breath for a, some time. And then I'm going to blow as fast and forced as I can. And the thing is that in one second, if this is a one second over here, if this is one second, I should breathe out like 80% of all air that I'm able to blow out, okay? So in one second with healthy lungs, I should be able to get rid of 80% of the, and you can call this forced volume capacity, okay? And so also you can put it in ratio like FEF1, that means how much I was able to blow in one second, and below is going to be FVC, so this should give me like 80%. Yeah. Well, those are healthy lungs, but now let's get to obstructive lungs. In this case, I will inhale 
I will hold the breath for one second and then I will try to blow out. But unfortunately, the, the curve is not as steep, okay? So I'm not able to breathe everything out in one second. And if this is one second, let's make it really serious over here. So this is 25%. So if I'm able to breathe only 25% of the FVC, so F1, FVC is only 25%, this is a serious obstruction. So F1 is decreased, is, is smaller. And that you have a good idea if someone has like F1 to FVC like 25%, and this also accounts, you know, sometimes you get tables like what should be the normal F1 for a like for a person who's tall like this and has age like this. And if you have only 25 percent of the predicted numbers, then this is a serious, serious lung problem. And if I could give you an example, this person barely walks from one part of the apartment to another one. OK with 25% FF1, okay? If, if you're gonna have like 50, yeah, he can walk barely, but he can walk around one block of houses or whatever, but with 25%, it's really serious, okay? So typically, if you have an obstructive disease, it's sort of, you feel it from the, from the name, uh, you're not able to blow out 80% of the FVC, you're going to blow less, 60, 50, or 25, like in this case, okay? That's a really serious problem. So over here, obstructive disease, we are talking about COPD, emphysema, and, and also asthma, okay? Asthma in terms of when there is an outbreak of asthma, okay? Yeah. In contrast, if we have a restrictive disease, If you have a restrictive disease, then you're going to inhale. You won't inhale as much because your total lung capacity is decreased. Total volume is decreased, okay? Because your lungs are not as elastic, okay? But you're able sometimes blow even everything in one second or let's say 95%, or it's going to stay normal, but your volumes are not as big. So it's going to be like 95%. So typically in FF1 till forced vital capacity, it's going to be 80% or more, or even more. So in this case, it could be 95%, okay? It depends, but it won't be lower, okay? So that's the main difference between obstructive and restrictive. I'm gonna still write obstructive over here. And this is a simple curve. So these are, uh, this is an example of the simple F1 curve, F1 curve, okay? And then there's, let's say you got, you know, if you put the patient in a machine and you know, you measure all the volumes, then you have also flow volume loops. And over here, they measure also the speed, how, how the flow is doing, okay? So, and th th these are special curves, which pretty tell you a lot. And basically, this is a volume over here, okay? And that's zero. And over here, you got an inspiration flow. So that's the speed of the air and expiration flow. Okay. And the normal curve, I'm going to make it green, is like, you know, you start somewhere over here. Let's say if I'm going to put one liter, two liters, three liters, four liters, five liters, and six liters. Okay. And if your lungs are healthy, let's say you start somewhere over here and you're gonna inhale. And sort of, you see you're speeding up when you're inhaling, this is the maximum speed as you're inhaling, and you're gonna, you're gonna, in, this, this is a maximum inspiration, okay? And now you're gonna exhale. And you see at the beginning, you really go fast, very fast. 
and then it sort of decreases. But this is a normal volume loop, okay? Yeah. If you're going to have obstructive disease, then there's some, you know, as, as we said, residual volume is going to be increased. So, so you're going to have over two liters uh, trapped in your, your lungs and you're not able to get rid of it. Then you inhale. It's very similar. So it, you can have an increased volume, total volume. But when you're going to blow out, you're, it's going to be slower. You won't, you won't reach the speeds like the green curve. So it's going to be slower. Okay. And then it's going to go back like this. Yeah. Something like this. So they're having... Uh, problems especially with uh, exhaling okay in contrast to this if, if you're going to have restrictive disease well basically you're going to start uh, you, you can have a decreased residual volume because all the volumes as i said are decreased okay so you're going to start on one liter you're going to inhale and you're going to basically copy you're going to copy the green curve so it's going to be very similar but everything's going to be smaller so you're going to inhale less air, but the speeds are normal. So this is going to very much, this is going to very much copy the, the green curve. Okay. If it's a restrictive disease. Okay. So. Those were differences in dynamic parameters between obstructive and restrictive diseases. But still, you have other, let's say, procedures with which you can test, for example, in terms of obstructive diseases, if it's only asthma or if it's asthma or COPD. So, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.